Where do you think you're going? Peter inquired, observing his girlfriend twirling in front of the mirror. To where? She responded with surprise. To meet up with the girls. I told you, yes, I remember, Peter said. But I was hoping you might change your mind. We just celebrated New Year's Eve together. It's only been three days. Do you already miss it that much? He asked, perplexed. Wouldn't it be better to spend time with me? Adelina kissed Peter on the forehead. We just end up watching TV anyway, and the girls and I have plans. We need to decide what we're going to do for Christmas. For Christmas, Peter looked at her, taken aback. What's wrong with our usual get-together, sitting around and spending time together? Well, no, Adelina replied, no, she repeated, pausing meaningfully. You can't wait. We want to make predictions, to know what the future holds. You're, she trailed off, implying something. Adelina, have you done it again? Peter asked irritably. Not again, just once more, she answered. Do you really want to get married? He asked. Is it that important? No, the girl replied simply. It's not important at all. What's important is that you still have doubts about us after all these years. It's frustrating, Adelina shrugged. So sorry, but we've decided to take matters into our own hands. Maybe we'll go to the cottage. We need a break from you guys. I'm going to start packing, Adelina turned towards the door. Okay, don't be angry, she requested. I didn't mean to, Peter waved his hand, accepting the situation. Okay, I understand, he said. 20 minutes later, the girl reappeared in the room, ready to leave. I have to run, she said, giving the young man a kiss. I'll be back before you know it, you won't even have time to miss me. I'll be back in no time, you won't even miss me, Peter replied. Have fun. As soon as Adelina closed the door behind her, Peter immediately picked up his phone and dialed his best friend Gregory's number. Is yours gone? he asked. Yes, just now, his friend replied. Why? No reason, Peter said. Let's call Vasia, I want to discuss something with you. Meanwhile, Adelina arrived at the cafe, where her friends were already waiting for her. How did yours react? She asked the girls. I don't know, Galia replied. I don't quite understand what's going on with Grisha. Well, well, Lita clapped her hands. Mine didn't quite get it either. She turned to Adelina, the mastermind behind the idea. So what's next? She asked. Are we really going somewhere for Christmas, or is it just a sphere tactic? Adelina shrugged. And why not? She asked. My parents have a summer house. Oh, remember, we went there last year. Let's go there, she suggested. The six of us spending the holidays together. It'll bring some excitement. That's right, her friends agreed. Let them feel what it's like when things change. Okay, Adelina said, trying to reconcile everyone. Let's think about what we're going to do. I propose some fortune telling. It'll be an interesting time. Goddess, the girl's eyes lit up. And what are we going to do? I don't know, Adelina replied. Let's give it a try. Each of us can find some interesting methods on the internet. And we'll try. I know one cool way with a candle and a mirror. Oh no, exclaimed Galia. That sounds scary. And very intriguing, Lita chimed in. If you're scared, it can just be me and Adelka. I'm not afraid of anything. I just don't fully believe in it, Gavia confessed. Adelina waved her hand dismissively. That's not the main thing. The main thing is that we have fun. Later, Adelina returned home. Peter was sitting on the couch watching a movie, but something seemed off. Suspicion flickered in the girl's eyes as she looked at him. Did you go somewhere while I was gone? She asked skeptically. Did you? Peter wondered. Why would I? I have everything I need right here. You're here now. That's good. Come here, I missed you. On the evening of January 6, Adelina picked up Galia first, and then Lita, and the girl set off for the countryside cottage. Listen, Lita asked, if I remember correctly, you have a regular cottage village there. Well, yes, Adelina confirmed. Will there be anyone else there besides us? Lita inquired. Probably, but there aren't usually many people there in winter. Why? Adelina responded. 
I don't know, Lita shrugged. It just feels a bit creepy. Galia chuckled. What's there to worry about? She said. I'm usually scared of everything. So come on, let's gather our courage. You and Adelko will have to calm me down. After driving for about an hour, Adelina finally turned onto the road that led to the cottage. By the way, what did the guys tell you? Galia asked. Pedia said they're going to your place. Adelina glanced at Lida. Lida nodded in confirmation. I even baked them a cake. Vazia seemed pretty relaxed. He said he'll miss them, and that's about it. Oha, uh -huh, Adelina replied. Pedia said the same. Well, at least they're not happy that we left. And what about Grisha? He also said he'll miss us, Delina said. And overall, she looked around, it's really eerie here. Even the road hasn't been cleared properly. Are we going to get stuck? No, we won't, Adelina reassured her. She finally arrived at the cottage and stopped the car. But we haven't been to the cottage this winter, she admitted. So there's a lot of snow in the yard. We'll have to make our way through the drifts. Are you ready? The girls nodded in agreement and stepped out of the car. Adelina struggled to open the heavy gate, and they made their way into the snowy courtyard. Each step sank them deeper into the snow as they walked towards the house. Do you have a shovel? Galia asked, panting. Maybe we can clear a path here. Trust me, we have plenty of work to do, Adelina replied. The house is cold, we need to stoke the stove. Then we have to light the stove in the bathhouse and prepare dinner. So we'll shovel the snow later, or maybe we can at least clear the path between the house and the bathhouse. The girls entered the house and shook off the snow from their clothes. Is there any light? Lita asked, standing in the dark. There should be. Adelina reached for the light switch and flipped it up. The light bulb flickered to life. Well, thank God, Adelina exclaimed, and her friends shared her relief. Do any of you know how to heat the stove? Well, I have an idea, Adelina replied. Let's give it a try. We don't have any other options. The girls quickly got the stove heated, but it didn't provide much warmth. The house remained chilly. No, Galena said, shivering. We'll freeze to death like this. You go and heat up the bathhouse, and I'll shovel as much snow as I can. After about an hour, the girls reconvened in the house, all feeling exhausted. I'd rather be with the guys. Lita slumped back in her chair tired. You're right, Galena agreed. Adelina looked at her friends. How are you feeling now? She asked. The cabin is warm. The bathhouse will warm up in a couple of hours. We have food. Let's have a snack and some tea. Then we can do a little fortune telling. Afterward, we can enjoy the sauna. And then we can do more fortune telling. In the morning, we can go for a walk. It never snows this much in the city. Here, silence, nature, tranquility. It's so nice to sleep here. You'll thank me for coming. Okay, Lita nodded. Adelina is right. It seems like we've dealt with the difficult part. Now, it's time for the enjoyable part. Let's set the table. As they ate, the mood considerably brightened. Listen, Galena remembered. Why haven't the guys been in touch? Probably because there's no cell phone reception in the cabin, Adelina answered. The signal is weak here. There's one spot outside the gate where you can send a text message. The girls checked their phones and found missed calls and voicemails. Well, Galena waved her hand dismissively, let them relax without us. How should we do the fortune telling? I heard you can throw shoes or boots over the gate, but here, it seems impossible. No one will pick them up. True, the girls agreed. I read about fortune telling with wax, Lita recalled. You pour melted wax into cold water and interpret the shapes that form. Great, Adelina exclaimed excited. Shall we give it a try? Well, Adelina asked an hour later. The bathhouse should be warm by now, shall we go? I found another divination, Galia said. Let's prepare everything, then we can go to the bathhouse, and afterward we can come back and do the fortune telling. Sounds good, the girls agreed. What do we need to do? Well, we'll need a few cups, 
Gallia explained. In one cup, we'll place a ring. <gasps> Another cup will be filled with water. We also need sugar, salt, a coin, onions, and bread. Okay, the ring and the coin are clear, but what do the other items represent? Adelina asked. Gallia explained. Water represents a quiet life. Sugar indicates that something very good will happen. Salt signifies bad luck. Bread symbolizes prosperity and well-being. And onions represent tears shed throughout the year. All right, Adelina agreed. Let's set up the cups and then head to the bathhouse. We'll just forget which cup contains what. And let's cover them with a towel and mix them up, suggested Lyda, to ensure everything is fair. The girls willingly agreed and prepared the cups. They mixed them up while covered with a towel and then made their way to the bathhouse. Inside, it was pleasantly warm, and the girls finally felt their bodies relax. You know, Adelina spoke up. I really want to try another divination, but I'm a bit afraid. What is it? The girls asked, curious. Do you mean the fortune telling where you sit in the dark with a candle and wait for someone's reflection to appear in the mirror? Gallia inquired. Mimahim, Adelina confirmed. I just thought it might be better to do it in the bathhouse. It's warmer here. Yeah, Leva added, and scarier. I'm really against it. Gallia expressed her concerns. I'm not sure, Lydia hesitated. Think about it, Adelina insisted. I'm afraid too, but they say in the mirror, you'll see your soulmate, the one who's meant for you. At least we'll find out if we're with the right people or not. Do you doubt Peter? Lita wondered. I don't know, Adelina shrugged. I don't doubt him, it's just, she waved her hand. Is this how a loving man should behave? Maybe he's the one who doubts me. Or perhaps we're just not meant to be together? Are you so worried because he didn't propose to you? Gallia asked. To be honest, I didn't care for a long time, Adelina admitted. He was the one who initially brought up marriage, dropping hints. But now, it annoys me. Whenever we argue, he quickly dismisses my opinions, saying I'm not his wife and have no right to demand anything. She waved her hands in frustration. Lately, it feels like he's purposely trying to push me around. Maybe he wants to break up and wants me to be the one to do it. Don't overthink it, Delina reassured her. But it's hard not to notice that something is off with your pedia, really. Adelina sighed. Well, let's forget about it, she said. I don't want to dwell on it today. Girls, let's just do the fortune telling and have a fun evening. I'll talk to Peggy later. Okay, they agreed in unison. What about the cups? Gallia asked. Shall we go back to them? Let's do the fortune telling and have some tea. Then we can decide what to do with the mirrors. Although I might not have the courage, she added. But I must admit, I'm really curious. The girls returned to the house and brewed fresh tea. They poured the steaming, fragrant drink into their cups. Who's first? Adelina asked. Lita, you go ahead. Lydia nodded and pulled out a cup from under the towel. A ring, she muttered, looking puzzled. Well, you got the best one. Adelina smiled at her. Gal, what's left for us? Shall we take turns? Galena smiled. Actually, let's do it together. All right, the girls slipped their hands under the towel and each pulled out a cup. A ring, Adelina murmured. So do I, Galia said, peering into her cup. But, and it's not the one we put in there, Lydia said, twirling a cheap child's ring in her hands. Adelina threw back the towel, revealing that all the cups contained identical baby rings, only with different stones. What is this? She asked her friends. Whose prank is this? It's not mine, Gallia answered. We didn't have time for that. We were always together. Yeah, Lydia confirmed, hugging herself. And that means someone was here. No way, Adelina looked at her friends. You're kidding, right? Galena suddenly smiled. It's you. No, Adelina shook her head. Not me, honestly not me. She looked at her friends, frightened. So there really was someone here. You're not joking, are you? No, the girls answered in unison. 
Adelina quickly threw on her jacket. Where are you going? Lita asked. Outside, Adelina said, grabbing the broom. I want to see what's going on in the yard and make sure we close the gate. I'll come with you, Lydia offered. I won't stay here alone, Galena said, getting up from the table. The three of us should go. The girls stepped out into the yard, scanning their surroundings. There was no one in sight. They cautiously approached the gate, which was tightly shut. Look, Lita suddenly pointed, there are some strange footprints. Indeed, where the girls hadn't cleared the snow, peculiar footprints were clearly visible. Gal, did you go there? Adelina asked. No, Galena replied. My feet aren't that big. What's that over there? She pointed towards a nearby building. The shed, Adelina whispered. We store buckets, watering cans, and printers there. Do you think someone is hiding there? Let's find out, suggested Lydia, her voice trembling. Maybe they're just some homeless people. Well, there's a lock, Adelina whispered, cautiously moving towards the shed. Adelina tugged on the door a few times. It's locked, she said, sounding more composed. Look, all the windows are intact, so there can't be anyone inside. I think we should go back inside. Let's go back inside. The girls returned to the house, making sure to check all the rooms and gradually calming down. Maybe someone was playing a silly prank? Galena suggested. We're in a holiday village, Lydia reasoned. There are only about 20 people here, maybe even fewer. Don't you think it's strange? If they wanted to steal something, but to come in and place baby rings in the cups. What do you think? Adelina asked her friend. Is it magic? A miracle? I honestly don't even know what to think, Leva admitted. One thing's for sure, I don't want to do mirror fortune telling. I'm not going to the bathhouse alone. Well, the bathhouse is locked from the inside, Adelina reminded them. Maybe we should give it a try. The girls looked at their friend skeptically. Are you serious? Adele said, eyeing her with skepticism. What do you make of all this? Adelina shrugged. I'd say it's something our friends would do. But coming all the way out here for a silly prank? No, I think it's too elaborate for them. Besides, they would have shown up by now to see our reaction. I agree, Galia nodded. I initially thought it might be them, but maybe we should call and check. What's there to check? They'll just lie and say they're at home, Adelina replied dismissively. Let's not bother with that. Let's go and set up the mirrors. I'll go to the bathhouse first. If it's them, Petty will definitely show up. I'll confront him there. Let's go, the girls agreed. Struggling, they managed to carry the heavy mirrors into the bathhouse and positioned them facing each other. Okay, Adelina said, rereading the instructions. So, we have to let our hair down and say the words. Nothing too complicated. Adeline, can we wait for you in the anteroom? The girls asked. No, she replied firmly. Then the experiment won't be complete. Just go home. Are you sure you're not scared? Galia inquired. I am, Adelina admitted, but not too much. The girls left, leaving Adelina alone. Immediately, she felt a sense of unease without her friend's presence. She hesitated for a while before turning off the light, aware that her friends were worried and waiting. She lit the candles and took a deep breath before finally extinguishing the light. Standing between the mirrors, clutching the burning candle in her hands, Adelina stared into the mirror. She felt a chill run down her spine, but Adelina was always courageous. She uttered the words slowly and peered into the depths of the mirror. At first, nothing happened, but then she thought she saw a fleeting shadow. Her heart began to race. She continued to gaze into the mirror, and there it was again. Now she realized that the shadow wasn't within the mirror. Her gaze shifted to the small window of the bathhouse, where something was glowing outside. Frightened, Adelina gasped and practically flew out into the anteroom. The window was back to normal. But then, Adelina spotted a figure in an inexplicable robe outside. The figure was holding either a candle or a lantern. She couldn't discern clearly. 
Panic took over, and Adelina opened her mouth and screamed Adelina, at the top of Adelina. her lungs. The girls' voices <gasps> finally reached her. Open up. They tugged on the closed door of the bathhouse. With trembling hands, Adelina switched on the light and opened the door. Galia and Lita immediately rushed inside, enveloping their friend in a tight embrace. Adelina was shaking uncontrollably. Are you all right? What happened? The girls asked, their words overlapping. Amidst tears, Adelina managed to speak. There, there, she finally said. There was someone out there, in the street. Did you see them? No, darling, we didn't see anyone, Galia replied. We heard you scream and came running. There was no one in the street. Perhaps you imagined it? No, Adelina responded, wiping away her tears. No, I wasn't imagining things. Someone is deliberately scaring us, and I won't tolerate it any longer. Not a single minute. Let's go inside. Bundle up. We'll search every inch of this village until we find out who it is. Adelina girls, Galia interjected, looking at her friends. Can't we just go home? No, Adelina retorted. Someone is playing games with us and you want to run away. I do, Galia affirmed. And I agree with Adelina, Gal, don't be such a coward. Let's go, Lita chimed in. By the way, she turned to Adelina, did you see anything in the mirror? No, Adelina shook her head. There was nothing there. It's all nonsense. It was all nonsense. They returned inside, dressed warmly, and ventured outside again. Initially, they meticulously searched the vicinity but found nothing. Then they opened the gate and stepped outside. So where should we go? Galia asked skeptically. The settlement is quite large. Let's go that way, Lita pointed to the left. We have to start somewhere. The girls walked slowly along the street, passing the first house, then the second. Everywhere was quiet. Don't you think this is silly? Galina asked. You just want to go home, Lita remarked. Suddenly, she and whispered, indeed, look, a group of unfamiliar figures emerged from the alley. Adelina tightened her grip on her friend's hands. It appeared to be two men walking, or no, three. It took a moment for her to fully comprehend what she was witnessing. One figure stood tall, wearing a hood that had startled her, and beside him. It seemed that the other two men had donned masks. Adelina had no doubt that they were men. Their stature was too imposing. Let's go, Galia urged, her voice filled with anxiety. While we still can. No, Adelina responded, her voice trembling. The one in the hood, he frightened me. Do you see? He has something hidden under that hood. It could be a weapon. Maybe they intend to harm us, Lita speculated. Adelina, we should really. Before Lida could finish her sentence, she abruptly stopped herself. What idiots, she suddenly exclaimed. Fools. Lita, Lita, what are you? Galia rushed to her friend's side. They're approaching us quickly. We won't have time to escape. And there's no need to run away, a familiar <gasps> voice echoed. Galia looked at the man on her right in astonishment. She recognized him immediately. Meanwhile, one of the figures in a balaclava knelt down. The balaclava slipped off, revealing Peter, who held a large bouquet in one hand and a ring in the other. Adelina, my love, will you marry me? He asked. Are you insane? A stunned Adelina retorted. I'm sorry, he apologized. We got carried away, didn't we? We only intended to give you a little scare. I never expected you to be that frightened in the bathhouse. I'm sorry, will you still marry me despite all this? Adelina looked helplessly at her friends. Galia was still trembling on the verge of tears, and Lita glared angrily at her boyfriend. Answer him, Lita told Adelina, because as soon as you decide, I'll kill him. Actually, Vasily interjected. That's not all we wanted to say. He looked at Peter, then at Gregory, both friends nodding in agreement. The other two men removed their masks and also knelt down. Well, that's better, Peter said, nodding with satisfaction as he glanced at his friends. And now, he turned to the girls. We want to ask you something. 
Will you marry us? Three jesters, Adelina muttered, unable to suppress a smile. But it seems there's no one else who can handle them, Lita added. Both girls turned their gaze toward Gallia. Are we in agreement? Gallia nodded. The girls exchanged glances once again and then answered in unison. Yes. The end. Thank you for reading and your support.